I'm Chuck Pippen from Icon Boats. Today I'm going to show you the top three reasons the LX model from Icon Boats is the easiest bass boat on the market to rig out with electronics. I'm also going to show you how I rig this boat out. This is my personal LX21. Number one, let's start with ease of access. Right here on the console, you have our easy access hood. As we've mentioned many times with that big overbuilt hinge, little drop-in tub right there. There's all your wiring right there on the LX. No need to lay up underneath your dash and squeeze your hands up in between. There's my wiring harness. To access the bow wiring harness, you just remove this simple plate right here with four screws. They can be removed even when your graph mounts are installed. Our wing style lids make easy access even when you're in the boat, when you're standing out of the boat or you're in the back. Here's everything in here. Easy access to everything. Number two would be that there's no need to install an expensive aftermarket wiring harness to power all of your electronics. Here inside this console is the access to our clean power yacht wiring harness. That's eight gauge clean power from back there to your console here. There's your positive bus bar and your negative bus bar. Up at the bow inside here, and I'm gonna show you this in a minute. I'm gonna take all this apart and show you exactly how I rigged it. But you have your clean power bus bar, negative and positive, right inside this panel right here. Clean power to the bow, clean power to the console. That's all powered on and off here with our custom breaker panel. You don't need to turn these breakers manually. This one switch right here powers your whole boat on or off. Number three would be our custom graph mounts provided by Boat Logics. You can get them straight from the factory. For the bow, you can get single, the dual low profile like I have here, or triple mount straight from the factory. Custom made just for the Icon boat. At the console, you'll see here I have a single graph mount. We also have the available dual graph mount that'll mount up to two 12 inch units side by side, straight from the factory. So now that I've showed you those top three reasons, which are ease of access, our eight gauge clean power yacht wiring harness, and our custom graph mounts provided by Boat Logics, I'm gonna disassemble my boat and show you how I rigged it. I'm gonna start by removing these two 13 inch apexes. Now that I've removed both units, you can see my dual graph mount here with the standard bridge mount from Boat Logics that is not mounted to this plate. It's mounted to the cap of the boat, the fiberglass here, then with this layer of acrylic over it, which gives you an area of probably three quarters of an inch or more thick. And then you just drill three holes there, three holes there, bolts through, quarter inch drill bit, Nice solid surface, you're not mounting it to this plate, you're mounting it to the cap of the boat, which is not gonna give you more um, sturdy of a surface to mount your big heavy graphs. I again, I have two 13 inch Hummerbird Apexes here on our dual graph mount from Boat Logics. You can get the single, the dual, or the triple when you order your boat straight from your dealer. Now let's get into here. You can see there's one, two, three, four stainless steel screws, and you can remove that plate. All right, once you've removed all four screws, you simply grab the plate down here. It recesses in there and it will slide right out. There's your plate, big thick piece of acrylic. Now that we have the plate removed, you can see my positive and negative bus bars right in there. It has up to seven spots right there for different units and up to five on the negative side. And the blinking lights down there, you see below there is my Humminbird hub, the port for my ethernet cables. All easily mounted in there. There's my fusion stereo system and the bus bar for my trolling motor. 
very accessible, even with the graph mount still here. So if you never needed to do maintenance, you don't have to disassemble your whole boat. You can remove your two units, two or three, one unit, whatever you have. Take that plate out with the four easy screws and reach down in here. But basically when rigging this boat, all I had to do was take the provided power wires from my hummingbirds, put some connectors on there and put in the proper um, fuses, standard fuses there, negative, positive, and it was all wired up. I installed all my own electronics. The ethernet port for my hummingbirds down there ran power. I am running on this wiring harness, this built-in wiring harness. I'm running my Mega 360, my Mega Live, and the two 13-inch Apexes up here up front. Very accessible if you ever need to do maintenance on the boat. You do not need to drill holes through any of this fiberglass besides for your bridge mount here, one, two, three, one, two, three, for your cables to run through because, I don't know if you can see up underneath there, there's a recess. So when the plate is reinstalled, all your cables run underneath here and you run, here's the three cables for my top unit that I use for Mega Live and the three cables down here, which I use for mapping. I use the bottom unit for mapping and my 360. And then they're all linked together, all three of my units, including my 16 inch unit on the console. So that's how simple it is. I mean, there's not a lot to show you. There's your wiring, built-in wiring harness that comes standard on all Icon boats, whether an LX or a VLX. Let's go to the console. So as I showed you before, I'm just running one unit this year. I had two 12 inch Solixes last year. This year I decided to go with one 16 inch apex because that fit my needs the best so you'll see even though i have one two three four sections here on our wiring harness four units there's only one hooked up because i have that one so there's the positive wire there's the negative wire that's it one very important thing i almost forgot to mention is that lx models from icon come nmea ready there's your as us bass fishermen call it, the NEMA port right here. There's also, which is connected to the bow. I'm not gonna take the bow back apart, but there is a NEMA or NMEA port up in the bow, very accessible for whether you're running Hummerbird units, Garmin units, or Lowrance units with any NMEA accessories that you might need to uh, attach to that. And then, Here's all the cables coming out of the back and just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that unit off and I'm gonna show you how you go through to get your cables through there. But there's also an ethernet cable, obviously, because this unit here is talking to those units up there. No, I didn't have to drill any holes to get that run through the boat. I fished it down through here. Ran it up underneath here, through here. Some of you guys that have a lot of external boxes, if you're running the rants, or if you have other Hummingbird port, uh, Ethernet ports, or some of your Garmin units, there's a lot of room underneath this drop down, this drop-in tub here that I fill full of soft plastics to mount those. You still have a lot of room right there. Um, I see people mounting them up here in, in this locker. I like to get as much weight out of the front, the furthest front of the boat as I can. So my last boat, because I had so many units, I had two ports. So I put the other Humminbird ethernet port right there. Ran the ethernet cable through there. No need to drill any holes. And here I have all my life jackets, but you can see all the way up there. I basically just fished the no pun intended, or pun intended. I fished the ethernet cable through here. I tossed it all the way up there with a little small rod. I pushed it up through here. It took me all of 10 minutes to run that ethernet cable, which in past models or brands of boats I've run, running ethernet cables was half a day. Drilling holes, taking boat seats out, and close out plates to just run ethernet cables with this boat. I've rigged several icons now. It took me 10 minutes to run that ethernet cable all the way to the front. 
So now that I've showed you how easy it is to get into your bow electronics and into the front of the console to install your power wire and how easy it is to run the ethernet cable from your console to the bow, I'm gonna take my 16 inch unit off here and show you how we run cables through to the front of the console here or the back of the console so you can power your console units. So you can see I removed that 16 inch apex and you'll see my single, this is the gimbal that's provided by Humminbird, so there was no need to put an aftermarket mount or graph mount here. It's simply screwed through hole with a nut on the other side. It's not tapped in there. That's screwed all the way through. Four stainless steel bolts I put there right through this acrylic plate and the fiberglass. So it's a nice thick base there that that's mounted to. If you were to choose the dual graph mount straight from the factory, this acrylic plate goes away and there is a powder coated steel plate that goes right here and you can mount your graph side by side. There's aftermarket mounts out there, not provided by Icon with the mount here. I think this plate gets replaced. I'm not knocking those. I'm just showing you what's available from Icon. And you'll see just like up front, the cables run underneath this, this plate right here. This, there's a recess there and all of those cables run right through there. So there was no need to drill any holes through here, allowing more water in there. I'm gonna remove this plate, one, two, three, four screws and show you how those cables come through the back side of the console here. All right, I have the four screws out of the plate and as you can see, it's easy to remove here. And there is a, it looks like about a one and a half inch hole pre-drilled there. If you had a lot of cables running through there, you can drill a bigger hole. You're not going to see it, but I was able to rig this unit last year. I had two 12 inch units with a lot more stuff going on here. Still ran all my cables right through there. And then when this plate screws back over, they, it feeds very, very nicely right behind there. So not mounting my graphs to this plate. I'm mounting them right here to the console. Doesn't matter how big the waves are, you're pounding through, that's not gonna go anywhere. And again, just to reiterate, if you were to choose the dual graph mount straight from the factory, available through your dealer, this acrylic plate would go away and the powder coated steel plate that sticks out about this far and centers your two 12 inch graphs. I, I think they can hold, you might be able to get some bigger graphs on there if you play around with it. But two 12 inch graphs side by side right there, that's what I had last year. This year I have the one 16 inch. After you run your cables underneath there, make sure you have enough room to feed them to the unit. Put those four screws back in and now your console electronics are mounted and your bow electronics are mounted. And if I don't talk about transducers, people are gonna ask questions. And that's really the last couple things that I have to go over is where the transducers are mounted. Obviously the transducers for the trolling motor are mounted on the trolling motor, the live, the Mega 360 and a built-in unit on the trolling motor itself. But I do have a through-hole transducer and a side imaging transducer mounted to the transmit of the boat. Once I go through that, we're done. Ease of access, built-in wiring harness, and custom graph mounts from the factory. All right, got my boat back on the trailer. A couple more things to go through. We're gonna talk about our through-hole transducer and our side imaging transducer that's mounted here outside the hull. So let's talk about that first. So as you see here, there's my side imaging transducer. We have this step here and I mounted it dead center on the motor of the jack plate that is a completely safe place to run this. I run through giant fields of hydrilla on a daily basis. And that's been on there since December of last year. Nice and secure. It looks like it's at a little bit of an angle, but boats sit like this. They don't sit flat like this when they're floating. They sit a little bit like this. So that is about dead even when the boat is sitting in the water there. So that's where my side imaging transducer is mounted there on the hull of the boat. There are other options. There's guys that there's mounts that are made that are people mount them right to the jack plate, different locations, but that's where I chose to mount mine. The through hole transducer is mounted in here. You can't hardly see it. Let me see if I can get a better angle there. 
our through hole transducer it's kind of hard to see it's underneath there there's a recess in the bottom of the hole because that is glued and it reads through the hole it's underneath here i just had to move that out of the way the recess there is great for um the the epoxy that you pour in there you don't have to put a ring around it it kind of settles in there it makes a great mounting surface for that transducer but that's this is not a show boat you can see my boat's used a lot so it's a little bit dirty down there but that's where the through hole transducer is run and then i did not have to drill any additional holes to run those transducer cables they came up through here right through there the, the external one did right through that entrance way there hit it around here this is a closeout ran it through the closeout there's some recessed areas you can squeeze cables through here there's not one single route to run it you can see we run right through there it's a drop-in tub here oh i have some weight in there as you can see in here that's a closeout this is a closeout which is held in by four screws i removed it you can see in here and i use an old fishing rod i have an old fishing rod that i've taken all the guides off of and i taped the the connection point of the cable to that and fished it right up through here and was able to pull it out a lot easier rigging these icons than it is a lot of other boats we make these videos to help you guys, help the guy, the rigging companies and help individuals that uh, like to rig their own boats. But this is by far, I've rigged probably 70 to 80 boats in my career. And the icons, the two icons that I've owned and a couple others that I've helped rig are by far the easiest at rigging. You can ask any of our dealers who sell multiple brands of boats. Their guys love rigging these boats. A lot of it's the ease of access, our built-in, yacht wiring harness and our custom mounts so that you can get straight from the factory or order through your dealer uh, we make these videos to help you guys out go check out the rest of our youtube channel you can see everything about our boats and how they're built if you guys have questions about rigging these boats or about anything else about icon or bass boats in general feel free to comment thanks for watching